Hello and welcome. Well, we're here today to share inspiration, how we can keep our little ones hydrated during summer and right throughout the year, which of course can be a challenge for many parents with fussy children who just won't seem to drink water. Now to help share her inspiration, we welcome our special guest, Chef Kate Stevens from Guardian Childcare and Education. Thanks for joining us. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Now, this is super exciting, and I wanted to chat just before we get into all the nitty-gritty, you had a really exciting career before you started working um, for for Guardian and with um, children, and I understand your love of food has taken you through a whole heap of different jobs at fine dining restaurants and writing recipes for different magazines and and even um, cooking food for photo shoots, which is all really exciting, but I understand that when you had your three daughters, you realized where your passion was really destined to be, which is with children. So that's a a really big career shift. So I'd just love to know, you know, what do you love most about um, the work you do working with kids? Well, I always, I always wanted a family. That was, you know, my number one sort of thing I wanted to do. And I left school and became a chef and I loved that. Um, But yeah, I sort of gave it all away to have my children And then found, you know, living in Sydney, I have to make a living as well uh, to raise them. Um, (laughs) Yeah. And then so started to look at what I could do um, with my skill set. And that's the best thing about food. You could do it anywhere, anything. You know, there's so many venues and value, like places you could go with it. So, yeah, I ended up falling into this job um, and I absolutely love it because I love children. I just think they're so interesting, you know, and, you know, my, my colleagues are little kids at work and I just, I love going to work every day. <laughs> they they want to see you and, they're, you know, they're fresh slate. They're just eager to learn things and they're fun, yeah. really fun. And, and that on the topic of hydration and, and children, um, I've read that during summer months, um, children are at much greater risk of hydration than adults. Um, so I really wanted to, to talk about this um, in great detail because, of course, you know, not only um, drinking water, but sort of food itself or obviously has um, water content. So there's lots to get through in our chat today. Um, but, yeah. you know, generally that the reason why children sort of a greater risk of being de- dehydrated is that they, you know, that they lose fluid sort of much more quicker because they're more active um, and, it's, you know, it's normal that, of course, they're a little bit more active in the summer months, they're out, outdoors a little bit more. Um, so I guess we have to be, I guess, mindful of this so we can sort of help uh, replace their loss of fluids from sweat and just keeping them hydrated in general. Um, and this, as I was just mentioning before, can be sort of challenging, um, but as we know, it's, it's really quite vital. Now, as a mum, as you were just mentioning, um, and also in your role, role for, for Guardian, have you just personally found that it's challenging to keep, to keep children hydrated during summer? Yes, like my children don't stop. And, you know, most of the children at our Guardian centres, we've got these amazing playgrounds and they're outside all the time. They're so busy. So I think I do, you do notice that, oh, where's your drink bottle? Where's it up to? Have you even had a sip today? And yeah. it's, um, it's quite, you know, surprising. And you've got to go, oh, hang on, maybe they're not having enough. Um, you know, this obviously can contribute to your bowel movements and how, you know, they're going, um, which can be really hard for little ones um, to regulate themselves. So we really need to watch that and make sure they're getting enough. Um, and yeah, I, I think without prompting, they don't drink enough on their own. Yeah. And, you know, proper hydration is really important, I guess, as kids, as you just said, don't always recognize the early stages of thirst, which can make them particularly vulnerable to becoming dehydrated. Um, yeah. And things, for example, which you would be in around sort of uh, as many children as you are every day as well, would notice a little bit more that um, when children are a little bit more irritable and tired and experiencing yes. headaches and even sort of dry skin, as we do as well, of course, and sort of drier lips, um, in most cases, they are already hydrated, which is pretty alarming, isn't it, I guess? Yeah, yeah, they do need to be you know, having it quite regularly. I mean, we don't have enough usually ourselves. So to expect a little person to know that it's, um, it's hard. Definitely. So, you know, I guess it is really important that we don't sort of wait for all of these signs and these symptoms to happen before we start giving them fluids. You know, it's, yeah. um, I don't know about you, but I get dehydration headaches and right at the top of my head. Do you get that at all? It's just, it's a horrible. Yes. Yes. No, it's, I I've, I've honestly using, 
looking at the children and making sure they're hydrated, I've looked at myself and how little water I actually have because I'm a bit too busy or I forget. Um, so it's, yeah, it's, it's important for everybody. Yeah. So overall, I guess it's really better for us to prevent the dehydration than curing it. So overall. Definitely. And if you make it, if you make it habit, you know, it's, it's just something you don't even have to think about. It's something you're never going to be if you're constantly having that drink bottle, that sip of water. Um, it's something you just don't need to worry about. Yes. Now, we published your article and the title is Keeping Your Children Hydrated During Hot Summer Months. Now, for someone who hasn't read the article yet, can you please just give us a little bit of an introduction to what it's about and, of course, what is the inspiration behind the article? Sure. It actually came from uh, what we did at our centre. We sort of do a little bit of a focus uh, and we've got like a little stand outside my kitchen that parents can see on pickup or parents or caregivers can see on pickup um, and we can just sort of like give a little bit of information but also capture the attention of the child or the, the families coming through um, and what we did was we just put a big jug of water and the children took turns in making their little potion and adding oh, things to it and then having like <laughs> just have a quick stop before you go and have a drink of water um, and then this way the children were actually inspiring the adults to stop and hydrate so they were teaching so they thought they were really clever um, saying something that you know mom or grandpa didn't know um, and then we wrote a little story about it and there was a lot of interest and they were like oh this is really this is a great idea so we took a little bit further and just really made a big focus and the article just outlines things that we did and we had a lot of success with things how to get them to drink water and that was our, our magic potions uh, tea parties <laughs> I mean, you know, what child doesn't like a tea party? So we did it with real water and let them drink it. You know, we obviously used our clean sets and sipped water. And I mean, they're getting hydrated while playing. Uh, we also did, what else do we do? We did uh, ice. Yes, because who doesn't like a tea party? So you're actually having drinks uh, of water and getting hydrated through play. So I did a lot of other little tips of things that we had a lot of success with. Yeah. And I guess a lot of the time it's really quite difficult to slow down the kids from the activities and running around. I could just imagine just to keep, you know, them, them drinking their fluids. So it, it is. That's, sort of, I think a massive point that they're just too busy. Yes. So if you make it part of their work, part of their play, uh, they stop for it because yes. it's what they want to do. And I guess to do this, we have to sort of introduce fun ideas, as you were just saying, that you, that you do in the centre to keep them hydrated and healthy. It's not just hydration yeah. as well. It's, it's yeah. a whole heap of different things with their digestive systems. And now we're in the midst of uh, um, summer. I'd love to share your tips. So in your article, you sure. share some great tips drawing from your experiences as a mother and a chef in childcare. So I just wondered if you could just quickly run through some of your top 10 creative tips to increase uh, children's water intake. So I'm all well, yeah, sure. <laughs> One of the, the easiest ways to do it is ice cubes. Um, you know, you can get trays like with everything, like little skulls, or I saw some with uh, little stars and hearts just from everywhere. Make ice cubes and you can put some food colouring in them or a lot of our children at the centre put like blueberries or even little bits of cucumber and then we add them to our cups um, because it's just that novelty uh, and then it's actually a cooking experience as well. While you're not cooking anything, you can do some chopping up, put them in there, mixing, freeze them, wait for them to freeze, and then the next day bring them out at lunch um, to share with your friends. Um, another idea. one, yeah, is is add flavour to the water itself because water can be a little bit boring. Um, so we, we often use lemons, and as I said before, in that big water canister that they were offering their, their parents or grandparents, um, oranges we came up with some really really exciting ones actually one little boy used he wanted blackberries so we got some frozen blackberries and it was batman juice oh, so I that was that. really good <laughs> yeah so anything like that it's super fun um, instead of ice cubes themselves doing some froze, frozen ah, frozen fruit uh, ah, chopped yes. up because um, then it'll make the fruit, make the water cold, but then you can sort of eat the fruit as well, which is fun at the end of the cup. And that also encourages, well, if you want to eat the fruit, you've got to finish the cup of water first and then you can get it. So that's also encouraging to finish that cup. 
Ice blocks okay. um, are awesome. Uh, they're generally sort of thought as, as a treat, but if you make them with some oranges and some watermelon, which are actually really hydrating as well, and they've got lots of vitamins and nutrients in them, and then top them up with water, it's a treat that's really just a big glass of water and some fruit. Yep. So they really enjoy those and they can do that to themselves. That's really fun. Drink oh. bottles. Now, drink bottles, I was only talking about this today and I walked outside and said goodbye to my friends. I served them lunch and then came to do the interview and two of them said, I got a new drink bottle. And I said, <laughs> oh, my gosh, let me see. You know, drink bottles are a really important accessory. It's something that they love to choose and show people because it's a bit of them themselves, their personality. So today there was a really big one with Toy Story characters. Yeah. And I got a new one for Christmas and I have it on my bench um, that's open and the children come and see me all the time. And, and the amount of people have gone, oh, you've got a new drink bottle, Kate. I said, yeah, yeah. Oh, can I have a look? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So drink bottles are really important. So, you know, just getting fun and having a few different types. Uh, and that goes, you know, with cups as well. Get some cool cups, maybe some plastic teacups, maybe some glass teacups, uh, maybe some red cups or some blue cups, you know, get a bit of choice. Yeah. Um, what's another one? Another one would definitely be tracking your in intake. There's lots of water tracker sort of printouts available. Yeah. Um, where you can sort of like color in the water drop if you finished a glass of water today. And for the older kids, you can make it a bit of a competition. I know I do with my daughters. I'm like, so are you going to finish a drink bottle today or am I going to beat you? And, and come home and meet at the end of the day and go, hey, look how much I've got left. Or did you finish yours? I remember my daughter came home the other day and said, mom, I'm so sorry. It's still full. And I was like, oh, that's terrible. She goes, no, because I filled it up twice. And I was like, yay, that's so good. Like, so a lot of fun <laughs> stuff like that. Um, but just chat, you know, have a really good conversation about it. Why is it important? You know, do you feel like you've got a headache today? Well, let's have a glass of water. That might help, you know. So, yeah, definitely talking about it. But I think, I think those sort of things we've Very found important. really useful. Yeah. Um, and I guess it's worthwhile noting that not all sort of drinks can help hydrate children as well, in particular fruit juices, as we know that a store bought can contain yes. so much sugar in them. It's really unhealthy as we know. And um, other drinks, um, such as even sort of soft drinks, um, can also include caffeine and contribute to the dehydration process as well, which is obviously not suitable to give kids. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, definitely. Water is the only drink. Water is the only thing that's going to hydrate you and help your body. The only exception to that is milk. We offer milk at morning and afternoon tea for yep. some added calcium. Um, but soft drinks really don't have a place and cordials don't have a place for children or really even in our own diets. Um, yeah. Water is the best and using those fruits or vegetables or herbs to flavor it is pretty much the only thing we should be doing. Those mm -hmm. soft drinks are really special occasion things um, and my children still don't have them. <laughs> yeah, and not just that, it's not good for their little teeth as well. As well, Definitely, <laughs> definitely. And, you know, of course, in the last few years, we've been encouraged to reduce our usage of single-use straws with good reason, and I think we're all in support of that. Um, however, there are many of those harder uh, plastic, the crazy straws, which you can have at home in your utensil drawer um, with all kinds of different shapes and coils that are so much fun and um, quick and easy way to sort of spice up, um, you know, any glass of water as well. So, you know. Straws know. are fantastic. I love straws, yeah. especially, especially the hard ones that you save and you can actually get the little pipe cleaner brushes. So you can actually give them a really good clean as well. But yeah, you can just chuck them in a drawer and then they get to choose which one they want to use. And, and that's an easy glass of water down. Yeah. <laughs> And another thing is about creating routines. And this is just something you were mentioning earlier, and I just wanted to bring that up again because um, I think that's a really important thing uh, to be able to not only just create a, a situation that's fun but actually giving them the opportunity to learn so they can create some form of a routine in their life. Do you have any other points or any other tips how parents can help create a routine to um, get their kids sort of hydrated um, in any other, any, any other way at all? 
Now, earlier on, you were chatting um, and giving us some tips about creating routines uh, for kids um, and actually making things fun. So I'd love to know, you know, do you have any tips how parents can help create a routine to help children always keep themselves sort of hydrated? Yeah, definitely. For us um, at my home, drink bottles are a really important thing and we sort of take them everywhere and they've got to take ownership over their special drink bottles. Are you going to fill it up? Do you want me to fill it up? Do you want some ice in there? Do you want to put in the fridge? So every night they come to the sink and then they get cleaned and every morning they get filled as part of our routine. And then wherever we go, we take them with us. Um, And then it's taken a little bit of time of losing the drink bottles but importance over them and responsibility and saying, where's your drink bottle? Okay, grab it. Or did you show Nana which drink bottle you brought today? Um, so that we've constantly got them on, on hand, uh, just as a little reminder. And I do it as well. So yes. it's definitely, they want to see you doing it. Yep. And I mean, another thing is too, um, I guess, is sort of fun summer mini projects as well, um, which I'm sure you guys do this in the centre as well, but to let kids study the effects of water deprivation on things like plants as well. Um, as, yeah. and if, if they see a plant wilting, um, displaying, I guess, the, the importance about the lesson of hydration. Do you guys do anything like that? Um, which I'm sure you do, of course. In the yes, centre. definitely. They do a lot of stuff like that in the room. And the plant is such a good one because it's so visual. Yes, and you can also discuss that you don't look like that when you haven't had a drink. But yep. what happens to you? And then we can talk about, you know, you might feel really tired or you might feel like really sweaty and you might have a bit of a headache. So talking to them about that, you know, these little people are so clever. They can really grasp, you know, quite complicated concepts. Yes. And if they relate to them. And I love what you were saying before about, um, I guess, that little hydration station as well. And I've heard a lot yeah. of parents creating that station in their home, which um, for summer, I guess, is a perfect time to create one. And of course, putting one together with, with either dispenser cups or in just encouraging your family to, as they walk by, to regularly sort of take a drink is to sort of keep kids continuously sort of hydrated. So um, is there anything else you want to add to that? Because I think it's a great idea. Yeah, I think it's just that uh, the chance to be independent is really powerful. Yeah. Uh, I know my three-year-old now, because we've got a little fold-out stool, uh, she can reach the tap and she just thinks she's the best thing ever because she can fill her own drink bottle. And, you know, that praise, like, oh, that's so great. Thank you. You've helped me. Oh, my gosh, you're so clever. And even that over the top, we do lots of cheers and, you know, taking a big drink and, ah. (laughs) <laughs> they think that's hilarious they think it's so funny and they go oh no hang on I'll do it and you go okay okay you do it and then I'll, I'll you do it again mum and you go ah. you know just having a bit of fun with it um they love that so definitely independence something they can do themselves or show you what they're doing yes and um and a lot of fun just a little bit of silliness and I guess even if they're used to drinking even the smallest amount of water continuously this is going to help them but stay hydrated, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, little sips constantly is the best way. And now for kids that are really fussy and refuse water, and we all know them, um, do you have any specific tips that you can share that can help parents at all? Fuss, yeah, fussy children are really stressful for parents. Um, I think the number one thing that the parent is get stressed, you know, and the children feel that. Yeah. As soon as, as, soon as mum's feeling frazzled they feel frazzled so it's not going to help so what you really need to do which is the hardest thing is just take a really deep breath you know and yourself and just go okay don't let them see that you're upset or worried I think firstly role model show them you know what you're doing and just constantly do it and then encourage them and praise any tiny little success this goes with food as well you know if they grab the cup or if they pour the water that's amazing. Well done. That's so great. I can't wait until you finish that big cup of water, even if they don't necessarily drink it to start with. You know, celebrate any small win um, because children, everyone loves to be praised. Everyone loves to make feel that, you know, you're proud of them. So doing those little things and then trying all those little tips, uh, flavoured waters, getting them to flavour the water, straws, cups, uh, and then just stick with it. You know, patience. Uh, attention and praise and and you will get there little wins and you'll get there yeah great advice and and what are your thoughts on maybe adding some great tasting like electrolytes to water to encourage kids to drink more often for the fussy ones that that are more likely potentially to 
to sort of experience dehydration? What are your thoughts? Yeah, I don't know too much about it, to be honest. Um, but what I would, I would generally think if you're really concerned, then you definitely have to talk to your doctor and things like that about those things. I worry without having the knowledge of what's exactly in them to recommend them. Yeah. Um, whereas if you look at an orange, an orange has an, a huge amount of energy and nutrients in it. So even if you were to square, uh, freshly squeeze a little bit of juice from an actual orange and top it up with water, that is going to be so beneficial for them. Yes. And, so you know, I'll probably stick with that. Which is a perfect segue to what I wanted to speak about now, which is, of course, the water content, which is in in, in uh, fruits and vegetables. And, of course, you know, going back to what we're saying at the start, I understand that as a chef, of course, you love cooking for children and cooking with them and sitting with them, um, educating them um, about good food through fun in general, um, yep. which is honestly, it must just be a joy to go to work every day, no doubt. Um, but, you know, how do you teach children um, at your centre about nutrition and a balanced diet? I mean, is there anything yeah. you can share with us? Yeah, definitely. Well, I think we really need to stop dumbing it down for kids. You know, eat your carrots, you'll see in the dark, eat your crust and you'll get curly hair. Um, you know, they're so, so clever. Just discussing it with them. And I find the best time to do this is over lunch. I will really try and get out there as much as possible because we've got sort of three different rooms so they sort of take turns but I'll just go out in there and eat with them and it doesn't have to be a big deal it's not like oh Kate's coming to have lunch I just sort of sit down and go hey can I have some lunch please and we sit down and then we look at what's on the plate and I'm like oh do you know this is this chicken's really nice do you like it and they're like yeah yeah no you know different things like that um, and I go well you know chicken's protein they're like, oh, what's protein? I was like, well, our bodies need protein. Oh, for what? You know, oh, they need it for the muscles and they need it for the brain. And they go, oh, really? I go, yeah, yeah. What else, you know, what else do we need? And they grasp things really quite quickly. And then, you know, the next day we might talk about, well, chicken was our protein yesterday. What protein do we have today? And, you know, they may say spinach. And I go, oh, yeah, spinach is awesome. But it's not really our protein. You know, what, what else do you think? Oh, chickpeas. Yeah, that's, you know, that is a protein. Oh, but that's not chicken. Yeah, I know it's not chicken. You know, <laughs> having those conversations and everyone's got something to say and they all want to be heard. These little people want to be heard. So I think this is the best time. So you can definitely uh, relate this to home life, which is hard <laughs> over mealtime, is having dinner with your kids. Now, this is so difficult to do, especially I'm very lucky my husband makes it home for dinner uh, because he gets up at like, 3 30 in the morning um but you know a lot of families they don't have both parents or caregivers there for dinner so maybe even just sitting down occasionally uh if my husband's not home so we're not as a family I'll just have a small portion with them so at least then you can discuss what's on the plate and if you've got healthy food on the plate you've got plenty to talk about about nutrition yeah you can see it they can taste it uh so that's definitely how we do it in our center is um through me sitting down, through the educators sitting down with them while they're serving and talking about why we're eating these things. And then we can continue that conversation through books later on and relate it back to what we were eating. Um, also in our garden, you know, we'll grow different veggies and that's just another point of exposure. So the more exposure, the more experiences, opportunities they have to see this healthy food, the more they learn. Mm -hmm. another amazing feature of our center is we have a huge kitchen window uh, and it's like a little bench and they've got little steps that they can walk up to and they're on eye level with me and we can fit about five children across and they can and they watch me preparing the meal so as we're doing that I can discuss why I'm putting in these mushrooms or why I'm putting in these spinach and quite often they'll say oh I don't like those I go oh don't you Oh, well, let's try. You might like it in this sauce and things like that. And that, that's a really another good opportunity just to have a chat. And they watch me prepare the meal so we can talk about what's actually going into the pasta sauce, um, you know, and why we're putting it in there. Like, why are we putting mushrooms in there? And why do we need to eat pasta? And why can't I have plain pasta? I'll tell you why you can't have plain pasta. And what, you know, what's our protein? Visit that again. 
Um, so they've, they're seeing again what's going in and I'm explaining why. And it's just a really relaxed thing and they're interested. So I think that's when you can really get through to them. So what I'm hearing is that the best way for parents to help children really embrace, I guess, good food habits and help create you know, just a health, healthy relationship to eating is just through that conversation and just continuous education in fun ways. Is, would, that, would you say that's it? Yeah, I would. I, I've, I've worked really hard on getting relationships with our children at the centre. And, you know, I think that's the same at home, just maintaining that relationship with your kids and chatting and, you know, having fun with it. Yeah. Now, getting back to hyd- hydration that we we're speaking about before, I understand yeah. there's a whole range of fruits that have really high water content. And I'd love to know what your thoughts um, are in general, I guess, of course, and, and you mentioned before about adding sliced fruit to water, which is which is a great idea. But I have a list yeah. of the fruits have high, that high, have high water um, sort of content and percentages, which I'd love to just quickly go through them. I'm going to just run through them now. Watermelon yeah. and strawberries have um, 92%, which is incredible. Grapefruit, mm. which people because of the it, it, they're bit, it's bitter isn't it grapefruit and a lot of people don't necessarily like it but that's still pretty high that's 91 percent water cantaloupe is 90 percent peaches are 88 percent a whole heap of others in, in the high 80s are pineapple cranberries orange raspberries blueberries and plums are between 85 to 87 percent um and the apples pears are 84 cherries and grapes 81 percent, and bananas are 74 percent water that is unbelievable i didn't realize the water content in those fruits were that high and all well above sort of 70 74 75 percent it's incredible isn't yeah, it's it? crazy yeah it's crazy when you start to look at it yeah and i guess you know we really want kids to to eat healthily and keep them high hydrated and one sure way to make sure that we're introducing them to a mix of fruit and veggies veggies obviously as we know but equally veggies have got really high water content in them also um of course cucumber and lettuce is 96 percent water i didn't realize that there was that much water in cucumber and lettuce it it makes you think what else is there right (laughs) yeah um zucchinis radish and celery are 95 percent um cauliflower eggplant peppers and spinach and 92 percent it makes you think like i know there's all of the other properties but there's just so much water in these broccoli's oh, 91 carrots have got 87 percent water content in them Did you know that that's crazy yeah um, that's why that's why fruit and veg are the perfect snacks you know just sticks and things to snack on because you're getting all those nutrients and that water it's perfect yeah and even green peas and white potatoes are 79% water content. So, you know, wrapping up everything that we've been speaking about today about hydration, but it's not just about that. It's about healthy eating overall Definitely. and a healthy lifestyle. Um, obviously, it's a combination of hydration and all the good stuff that we know, which is the fruit, fruits and vegetables, um, which, of course, you're a big fan of. But it, I guess if yes. you were to summarize I guess all your key messages for anyone watching and listening today like what what would your key messages be I think definitely just have the opportunity to chat to your child or the children at work you know and make it part of your routine slow things down a bit focus on what's really important and take the time to discuss it with them. Often they've got their own ideas of things that they can implement so that they can have their, uh, their own take on it um, and be responsible for it and then influence them by leading by example, doing it yourself. You'll realise how much you can improve your hydration or your eating habits when you're trying to show someone how to do it and you'll reap the benefits as well. Awesome. Thank you so much for all of this information. I've learned a lot too um, and come up with some some great new ideas from you. So thank you for that. We'll have a link through to the article in the show notes. But if anyone's got any questions and and or wants to reach out to you or anyone at Guardian, worry about, can they find you guys? Yeah, definitely. Our website, guardian.edu.au, they have, it has everything you can need to know. Um, There's lots of recipes and tips, um, activities as well that you can try at home. And then even some nitty gritty stuff about claiming the child subsidy, which is really challenging, all those kind of things. They have that there. So definitely check out that website and yeah, let us know if there's anything, you know, you want to know. Awesome. I really love this chat. Thanks again. Take care and uh, we'll stay safe.
Thanks, Kate. Thanks for having me. Bye. Bye.